In this episode, we got humanoid robots, insect robots, hell, kitchen robots. Whatever robots rock your boat, we got them. Also on the menu, GPT, going into space on a balloon, and Legos. Hold on to your butts, because this is going to get rocky. So Aptronic just struck a deal with GXO. You know what that means. Apollo humanoids are now going to scatter around GXO warehouses to help pedal Apple and Nike more efficiently so that you can get your new iPhone Pro Max within the next hour instead of two. Seriously, we live on the third mall from the sun. Check out Bill Hicks for more. Obviously, GXO's press release is going to look better than a post-op tranny. Check it out. Quote, Apollo has great potential to add value throughout the distribution center, including the most labor-intensive operational processes. These kinds of robotics reduce repetitive work and improve safety while freeing associates to focus on higher value-added activities. End quote. See, these are not minimum wage workers, they're associates. Well, these associates better learn dropshipping or OnlyFans or something, because here's the translation. We're gonna kick the dumbest ones out, while the smartest get to hang around and teach Apollo how to get things done. That is, of course, until Aptronic comes out with an update or a patch or something, and then we can wave these folks bye-bye as well. GXO has 130,000 employees, such a fat piece needs a trim, and Apollo is just one of several systems used by GXO. For example, Digit from Agility Robotics is also in the mix. If you're surprised how quickly this switch from manual labor to robots has taken place all around you, then congratulations, you've been living under a rock. Hopefully, the rent included heating. Apollo's near human mechanics and range of motion are a result of more than a decade of work on humanoid robots. Just wait till they integrate NVIDIA's core robot learning model, Project Groot, into Apollo, and we are one step closer to Skynet. And we're not done. Actually, we're just getting started. Fourier, a company that decided to piggyback on Fourier Transforms, got its GR1 humanoid robot, which by the way is already in mass production, to see even better. They call it pure vision, but it has zero biblical connotations. Basically, they put six RGB cameras on a robot for a 360 view, and then got a neural network to process these images, and then spit out a bird's eye layout for the robot. That way, instead of stumbling around like your uncle at a 4th of July barbecue, the GR1 has a 3D grid layout letting it pick the shortest route to wherever it's going. Apparently, they've done outdoor tests. The humanoid was able to accurately detect cars and pedestrians, track their movements in real time, and map its environment as it traveled. If only crews could get their hands on this technology, huh? I kid, I kid, Cruz is doing a good job of solving the San Francisco homeless situation. Another company known for its genius of taking historical names, Tesla initially relied only on cameras to create its active driver assistance system. And we've recently come to find out that this year's first quarter, Elon Musk's company became the largest buyer of LiDAR from Luminar. Here's a suggestion. Send those Teslas out into the Amazon to look for undiscovered Mayan ruins so we could use this knowledge and figure out the secret to King Pakal's rocket and finally solve this dilemma once and for all of the first stage, second stage, whatever stage problem with Starship so that we can all go for a picnic to Mars and make it back on time to Earth to see Edmonton getting their heinies handed to them by the Panthers once again. Moving on to the winner of the biggest tease category, OpenAI with its GPT-5. For real, the marketing people at OpenAI are the same people that hyped Basic Instinct 1 and 2. Now, it wasn't Tony Hinchcliffe lookalike talking this time, but his alter ego wannabe, Mira Murati, the company's CTO. At Dartmouth College School of Engineering, she compared the GPT-3 model to a small child, GPT-4 to a good high school graduate, and 5 being no less than a PhD. 
Speaking with so much candor, Marathi did not mention all three in a classical Albanian manner, occasionally lying through their teeth and getting pretty hostile. She was also quite vague about the timeline of General AI, saying that it will probably take another year, maybe a year and a half. If you've ever read The Art of War by Lao Tzu or The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli, you'd know these folks just playing us by giving us conflicting information, like Altman previously going on about GPT-5 and then boom, GPT-4.0. You gotta hand it to OpenAI though, with trying to build artificial intelligence for humanoid robots, they got a lot on their plate and they're not eating their broccoli. Check out our previous video in the description to find out why. Knock knock, who's there? Circus, circus who? Sir customize my kitchen in China. If that's not funny, don't blame us. Blame this German developer of autonomous robot kitchens that got its eyes on Beijing. The robot only needs 200 square feet or 20 square meters of space, runs its own Circus OS, and maybe in the future will be able to convert itself into a distillery for some quality schnapps. Duh. Their CA1 robot can evenly distribute ingredients, prepare and package food, and clean up all by itself. Almost as if the industrious German male brain looked at their frows with pink hair on a per capita basis, decided it's kazoom time, and built a kitchen that cooks on its own. Apparently, it got so good, even China was like, we need a piece of this. Either that, or they used an AI translator, and now the Chinese think they'll have a mini Cirque du Soleil in their kitchens. Whatever they're doing, the German company managed to sign a memo of intent with Beijing University, which has no legal recourse, but hey, if you get the Chinese to sign anything, that's a miracle in and of its own. And Shanghai University admitted their passion for bugs by creating the most insect-like robot anyone has ever seen outside of Bill Gates' mosquito farm. The JT Fly robot can crawl, take off horizontally, even off its back, fly, hover, and land. The device weighs a bit over an ounce or 35 grams and has a wingspan of 13 inches or 33 centimeters. JT Fly uses four wings simultaneously to fly at speeds of up to 16 feet or 5 meters per second and six legs to crawl at one foot or 0.3 meters per second. The robot has eight minutes of flight and about 60 minutes of crawl time. This is more than enough to snitch on your neighbor and get a social rating boost. Remember when you played Legos and it was super fun? Well, YouTuber Stan from Holland never stopped. He runs the Creative Mindstorms channel and has put together a couple of Lego projects so cool they've actually got noticed by Robotics Media. It's actually pretty awesome. Stan has a Pixelbot 3000 Lego printer, a full-on talking Lego head with GPT inside, a self-driving Lego car, and a bunch more. Check it out, Creative Minds, on YouTube. And if you've ever wanted to go to the stratosphere in a hot air balloon, then congratulations, you got nothing better to do, just like them rich dudes in that Titan. But lucky for you, Space Perspective suddenly got a competitor, also planning to send tourists to look at Earth without a fisheye lens. That's right, EOS X Space says their capsule is almost ready. The seven-seat pressurized carbon fiber capsule is due to begin commercial flights from Seville and Abu Dhabi end of next year. Your butt will be caressed by ergonomic seats, eyes by panoramic windows, and in case you want to get lit 24 miles or 40 kilometers off the ground, there's an in-flight bar. The entire up and down should take about 5 hours and will cost you anywhere between 150 to 200,000 euro. Compare that to Space Perspective and their flat fee of 125,000 real money American dollars. Like this video if you did, subscribe to the channel, and check out our social media for more news from the world of high tech.